So R-A-T-E-Y, or RATI as it's affectionately called, is just another way of graphing rational functions. Um, so you all have seen before how I usually will do this, and I do like horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, x-intercept, and y-intercept. RATI is just another way of what are your key features of the graph, and like writing those out just in this form of RATI. So same exact thing, just a little bit different. So R stands for roots, which are the x-intercepts. So to find that, you set the numerator equal to zero. Okay, the Y stands for y-intercept, which you do by plugging in zero for x. In RATI, it's just a form that people like because it tells them like R-A-T-E-Y, what each thing stands for and like when they do it. So A stands for asymptotes. Specifically the vertical ones. And remember, you find the vertical asymptotes by setting your denominator equal to zero. Okay, horizontal asymptotes is with E, end behavior, because what is it doing on the ends like that? So that's your horizontal asymptote. Remember that you can cross a horizontal asymptote. That was this way. You can cross it. Remember, it might not approach it on the top. It might just approach it on the bottom. So E stood for end behavior, which was your horizontal asymptote, which was the heaviness. Bobo botany it's DC. And then T is togetherness. We talked about in the last video about the kind of quadrants, how you'll have like six sections like that. Is it here or here or here or here? Togetherness is when you would have a section like right there and they would do this or something like that where they're coming together. So to, T stands for togetherness. Togetherness only happens if you have a PST in your denominator. So I'm just going to write PST and we'll do one here in a second. So remember, when graphing, you can set up this little thing and find your key features that way, or you can do RADI. So it doesn't matter. Some people like to graph by RADI. Some people just like to know how to find all the key features. It's really up to you. We're just going to do some practice with RADI. So remember, always start by factoring. So I see a difference of squares. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 2 over x minus 2 times x plus 2. And that ends up canceling, and I'm left with 1 over x minus 2. And this is the function I'm looking at now. So roots, R stands for roots, set the numerator equal to zero. Is one ever going to equal zero? No. So this one doesn't have any roots. None. Or you could put NA. Because one doesn't equal zero. Okay, A asymptotes stands for vertical asymptotes. Set your denominator equal to zero. So if X minus two equals zero, I have an asymptote at two. But I have to remember that I removed x minus x plus 2. I messed this up. x plus 2. My bad. Y'all know I ain't refilming. So subtract 2. So x equals negative 2. Okay. But I removed the x minus 2. Which means I'm going to have a hole. Remember, if it's removable, that means I'm going to have a hole where x is 2. Asymptote here because it was not removable. What was removable, what I did cancel out, is where I have a hole. So removable, hole, and non-removable is actually a line. Okay, togetherness. Do I, you have any perfect square trinomials or is there any like a term squared? There's an x squared, but that doesn't count. I need like x plus 2 squared. And if there's none of that in our function, which is what we have this one, then there is no togetherness. Okay, 
E end behavior. Remember the horizontal asymptote is the heavy. This is bottom heavy. So Bobo, bigger on the bottom. So Y equals zero. And then Y stands for Y intercept. Plug in zero for X into this one. So I'm going to have 1 over 0 plus 2, so my y-intercept is going to be 1 half. And now I'm going to go over to my graph. <coughs> oh, sorry. And graph those key features. So I have an asymptote at x equals negative 2, a vertical one. My horizontal asymptote is just the x-axis where y was 0. And I have a y-intercept at 0, 1 half. So if that's 1, 0, 1 half would be right here. It's going to do that. Okay, quadrants. Togetherness means that if I have something over here, togetherness says it has to be go right here. So if there was anything like a perfect square trinomial, togetherness means that if you have something in one quadrant adjacent to it, it's going to go so they come together but I don't have that in this quadrant. So I'm not even gonna do a test point. If there's no togetherness, it's gonna to be across and there's no togetherness. So my other curve is gonna go across like that. And there's one more thing I have to do and that's I need a hole where X is two. So over here where X is two, it should technically have a hole there. So your graph would actually look like this. And that's how it works. Specifically, my hole would be at 1 fourth because 1 over 2 plus 2. So my hole is at 2 1 fourth. But you can just sketch that out for this. And that's Rady. So Rady is just like graphing, but just a different way of graphing by using the R-A-T-E-Y system. So on this one, first thing first, factor it out. So sum to negative 9, product is negative 10. Give you a second to think about it. You negative 10 and 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 10 times x plus 1 all over x squared. And nothing cancels out. So our roots, x intercepts, set the numerator equal to 0. That's why people like Rady is they remember r, numerator equal to 0, a, denominator. So that's why a lot of people like Rady is it just helps them remember what's what. So my roots are at 10 and negative 1. So I have a point at 10, 0, and I have a second point at negative 1, 0. Okay, asymptotes set the denominator equal to 0. So if I square root that, I'm going to have an asymptote at x equals 0, which is just your y-axis. So I know I'm going to have one right here. Okay, togetherness. I do have something squared. I don't have an x plus 2 squared or x plus 3 or x minus 3 squared. I just have an x squared in the denominator. So togetherness, something to add, you want that PST. So you want something squared in your denominator. So togetherness means that if I look at my denominator right there where x is 0, my graph, my lines are going to come together. Okay, let's say you have this in your denominator. So you had x minus 7 squared in your denominator. As long as it's in the denominator, this means that your graph would come together where x equals 7. So along that line, they're either going to come up and go together or they're going to go down and go together. And you'll see what our graph looks like in just a second. So this one did have togetherness because I had a term squared in the denominator. And then E, end behavior, my horizontal asymptotes, it's balanced. So if I look at my leading coefficients, 1 over 1, that's it. So Y equals 1. So I can come over here. So 
sketching out my asymptotes. Okay, y intercepts. If I plug in 0 for x, I get 0 in the denominator. And you can't have 0 in the denominator, so I end up with a number over 0, which is undefined, which means that there is no y intercept. So when I go to graph this, I know I have an x-intercept at negative 1. I know I have an x-intercept at 10, so 10 would be all the way over here. And then my graphs are going to come together. So it means right here, they can't go up and come together because then they're going to cross. So they have to go down and come together because they come together where x is 0, which is that line right there. So if there wasn't togetherness, they were in opposites, like this one. If there is togetherness, then I know one's here, the other one's there. Well, they're going to come together right there. So that's it. So when I go to sketch that, I'm going to sketch them out. And they're coming together. And this one, like that. Now, if you go to actually go graph this in Desmos, it's going to look a little bit different. It's actually going to do this thing. And it curves kind of like that. So it actually goes up and bounces. But that gets into pre-cal stuff. So if you put the navy, if you put that, that would be correct. If you put that, I'm going to know that you went to a calculator and cheat it. So you would actually lose points for that. But that bump, that stuff that you'll get into in pre-cal is whenever you're graphing rational functions and there's something that's odd about the graph, how do you detect that? How do you know what it is? And I'm going to do this last example in the video. But remember, you don't have to graph by radii. You can also just do this if that's what you would prefer.